Hey everyone, how's it going? It's me, JM. I'm finally back um, posting a video. It's probably been around like three years since I last posted any um, videos to this channel, but I thought that, you know, I had a couple ideas today. So I thought I'd make a little helpful guide. So in case you're new here or first time you've seen one of my videos, I'm a commercial and corporate filmmaker and occasional photographer here in the Philippines and most recently I've been doing a lot of stay-at-home product shoots as well. I've been doing a lot of um, work with products in green screens like placing objects, products or even people in different environments as well. So today I thought I'd share three really simple but really effective tips to help improve your green screen shots. So my first tip is to keep your green screen as flat and even as possible. Whether you're hanging it on a dedicated backdrop stand, whether you're sticking it to your wall, and whether you're using like cloth or background paper as well, it's really important to make sure that your green screen is as flat and has as minimal creases as possible. So it's recommended that you either use an iron or use a steamer on your cloth before using it. But bear in mind when you do use cloth, there's a chance that you won't be able to eliminate every single wrinkle. So you just want to get it as close to smooth as possible to avoid any of like the struggles of removing all those creases and uneven shadows in post. Make sure that when you do like your green screen, you like the whole thing evenly as well and make sure that um, both sides are evenly lit and don't have any hot spots. So you wanna make sure that your lighting is even. So important tip number one is to make sure that your green screen stays flat and that it's lit as evenly as possible. So tip number two is to make sure that you avoid casting any shadows on your green screen. You should make sure that on your green screen, when you have your subject in front of it, you cast as little shadow as possible. You separate the green screen and the subject with a little bit of space in between. So this is definitely something I learned the hard way. Really hard to key out those shadows, especially when you're using a really harsh light. And also make sure that you're lighting your subject as evenly as possible, ideally with a soft light, like a soft box. Another bonus tip here is to make sure that your light is positioned a little bit higher than your subject, so that if ever there are any light shadows that are cast, they're usually cast downwards as well. So that is tip number two. So tip number three is more on the editing side. So I used to have problems with my subject having a little bit of green along the edges, even when I keyed out my green screen using the ultra key effect in Premiere. But I found that using color curves is really useful in neutralizing a lot of the green in the edges of your subject. All right, so jumping into Premiere Pro here, we see we have our clip of a glass that's filling up with this red um, fluid. We have our green screen and then we have our main subject here. So the tricky part here is that our subject is transparent glass and usually when you're dealing with glass there's bound to be a lot of reflections of green. So what we're going to do is we're first going to apply our ultra key effect to key out the green and then we're going to use our color curves to enhance our key. So going here to our effect controls you type in ultra key, you get the ultra key um, effect here, which we'll be using to clear out the green screen. You can drag that onto the clip as well, but I already have it um, currently here on my effects. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna use the eyedropper tool, select the green. So now we've successfully keyed out our green screen, right? So before we go any further here, we have to check and see if there's any spillage. So I can already see a little bit on this side right here. So you can see there's a little bit of green on the edge. So one way I found to check for spillage is to create a color mat of white. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click here on our project panel, go to new item, and then we're gonna create a new color mat, uh, set it to our resolution, which is 1920 by 1080. Press okay, select white. So we have white here. Press OK. We're just going to call this one white background. All right, there we go. So now we're going to drag our white background here to our clip. So if you're going to play the clip here, you can see there's a little bit of green here. So what we want to do is get rid of the screen and the green over here on the top of the fluid. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our Lumetri color panel. So mine is handily located here. 
And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the curves tab and we're gonna scroll all the way down here to our hue versus hue curves. So I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna select our dominant color for this. So in this case, it's gonna be red. So the easiest way I found to do this is to use our eyedropper tool here. And I'm just gonna drop it over here. And you can see it automatically selects the red, orange, and sort of the maroonish red channel over here. So we're gonna drag this a little bit this way, just so we can see it. Select our green area here, corresponding to our green screen, select that. And now, since most of this spillage is occurring in the highlights, so usually our highlights are the brighter colors of our image, our reds are our more neutral colors. So we are gonna drag this a little bit upwards towards the green. So you can see that the green spill is already disappearing on this side here, right? So we can't see our green anymore and we can definitely see a huge improvement. If I toggle this off, you can see there's a lot of green there. And if I toggle it back on, the green is suddenly gone. There you go. We've eliminated our green spill. And once we add just a little bit more um, color correction here, we're gonna add a couple curves to our image. And we're just gonna clean up our math as well. Give it a little bit of a choke in, soften our edges just a tiny bit. And you know, up our green key here just a little wee bit. You can already see <clears throat> a really huge improvement in our ultra key effect. All right, so those are my three really simple but really effective tips in making your green screen shots a little bit better and just a little bit easier to work on in post. So what do you guys think? This is my first ever tutorial or like just my first time sharing this kind of knowledge and I really do enjoy like just sharing this information because I definitely wish that I had this knowledge when I started working on a lot of stuff. So yeah, just let me know what you think. If you have any tips of your own, do share them in the comments below as well. And uh, if you really like this, then I hope to see you next time. So I'll see you later. Bye for now.